The bustling terminal at Heathrow Airport was alive with the sounds of hurried travelers. The clicking of heels and rattling of luggage wheels blended with faint announcements over the intercom. Ed Sheeran sat quietly in a corner, his hood pulled low and a pair of sunglasses resting on his nose. He scrolled through his phone, blending in as best he could. It wasn't often that he got to enjoy anonymity, but today he needed it. Ed was en route to a charity concert in Atlanta, aiming to raise awareness and funds for underprivileged communities. His flight, however, had been delayed for hours, leaving him stranded amidst the chaos of the terminal. As he sat, his eyes caught sight of an elderly woman sitting by a window across the lounge. Her calm presence contrasted sharply with the frenetic energy around her. She was knitting a bright yellow scarf, her hands moving steadily as if undisturbed by the bustling crowd. But the peace was short-lived. A sharp, cutting voice broke through the hum of the terminal. Why is she just sitting there taking up space? A group of three well-dressed travelers stood nearby, their disdainful expressions directed at the elderly woman. Doesn't she have somewhere else to be? Another muttered. Ed's attention snapped to the scene, his heart sinking as the woman's hands hesitated mid-knit. He could feel the tension rising, a moment that demanded more than just observation. Ed adjusted his hoodie and sat forward, his grip tightening on the edge of his phone. The group of travelers didn't lower their voices, their comments growing sharper. She probably doesn't even know how to use the check-in kiosks, one of the men scoffed, earning chuckles from the others. The elderly woman, still seated by the window, didn't look up, but her knitting slowed. The tension in her shoulders was unmistakable, a silent signal of discomfort. Ed took a deep breath, willing himself to stay calm. It wasn't the first time he'd witnessed such blatant disregard for someone's dignity, but seeing it unfold so openly made his stomach churn. He pushed himself to his feet, blending seamlessly into the stream of moving travelers as he crossed the lounge toward the group. That's enough, he said, his voice firm yet controlled as he stepped into the circle of tension. The trio turned, momentarily startled by the interruption. One of the women crossed her arms, her gaze narrowing at Ed. And who do you think you are? She demanded. It doesn't matter who I am, Ed replied, his tone steady. What matters is that you're treating her unfairly. It's unacceptable. The man among them smirked, dismissing Ed's words with a mocking laugh. Oh, great. A white knight has arrived, he said, his voice dripping with sarcasm. Ed ignored the jab, his focus unwavering. Ma'am, he said gently, turning to the woman by the window. Are you all right? Her hands paused over the bright scarf, her eyes meeting his with quiet dignity. I'm fine, son, she replied, though her voice wavered slightly. I've dealt with worse. Ed's jaw tightened. You shouldn't have to deal with this, worse or not. The man stepped forward his posture stiffening. Listen, buddy, he said sharply. We weren't talking to you. Maybe you should mind your own business. His words carried an air of arrogance, as if he fully expected Ed to back down. But Ed held his ground, his gaze steady and his voice calm. It becomes my business when I see someone being treated unfairly. What you're doing is wrong. One of the women rolled her eyes her tone dripping with condescension. Oh, please. She's not hurt, and it's not like we're doing anything serious. People these days are so sensitive. The comment ignited murmurs among the other travelers in the lounge, some craning their necks to watch, while others exchanged disapproving glances. Ed opened his mouth to respond, but before he could speak, someone from the crowd exclaimed, Wait, is that Ed Sheeran? Heads turned as whispers rippled through the terminal. Phones were quickly raised, cameras clicking and videos rolling. The businessman's confident smirk faltered, replaced by an awkward mix of annoyance and realization. Are you serious? He muttered, glancing at his companions. Ed sighed inwardly, 
realizing his anonymity was gone. Still, he didn't let it deter him. He turned back to the elderly woman, his expression softening. What's your name, ma'am? He asked gently. She hesitated briefly before answering. Ruth. Ed nodded. Ruth, do you mind if I play something for you? Ruth blinked, surprised, but a small smile tugged at her lips. I suppose that would be fine, she said softly. Reaching into his carry-on bag, Ed pulled out his guitar. The crowd grew silent, anticipation building as he strummed the first few chords. The melody was soothing, the kind of tune that made the world feel a little smaller and kinder. Then, his voice rose, steady and clear. We all have a place in this world to belong where love is the answer and hate is all wrong. Together we stand. Let kindness be the key, a better tomorrow for you and for me. The lyrics filled the terminal, silencing even the group that had mocked Ruth. Their smug expressions faded as Ed continued, pouring his heart into the music. As the final notes of the song lingered in the air, the crowd erupted into applause. Some clapped quietly, while others cheered, their voices blending into a wave of appreciation that swept through the terminal. Ruth sat still, her knitting forgotten in her lap, her eyes glistening with unshed tears. She gave Ed a small nod, her lips curving into a warm, grateful smile. One of the women in the group crossed her arms tightly, clearly uncomfortable with the shift in atmosphere. This is ridiculous, she muttered under her breath, though her voice was loud enough for those nearby to hear. Ed straightened, his gaze hardening as he turned back toward the trio. What's ridiculous, he said evenly, is how anyone could think it's okay to treat someone like this. Ruth has the grace to ignore your behavior, but that doesn't make it right. The businessman frowned, his previous confidence replaced by unease. All right, fine, he said with a dismissive wave. You've made your point. Can we all just move on now? Ed shook his head. It's not enough to just move on. People need to understand why this is wrong. Ignoring it doesn't stop it from happening. It just lets it continue. He glanced at the growing crowd, his voice rising slightly to carry over the murmur of onlookers. This isn't just about Ruth. It's about every time we see something like this and stay silent. That silence is part of the problem. A young woman holding her phone stepped forward from the crowd, her voice firm as she said, He's right. We can't just ignore this stuff anymore. Her words sparked a ripple of agreement as others began to nod and murmur their support. The shift in the atmosphere was palpable. What had started as a tense, uncomfortable scene now felt like a moment of solidarity. The businessman glanced at his companions, his discomfort evident. Let's just go, one of the women muttered, grabbing her bag. Together they walked away, leaving behind the echoes of the applause and a lesson they likely wouldn't forget. Ed watched as the group disappeared into the crowd, their earlier arrogance replaced by visible discomfort. The tension in the terminal shifted entirely. What once felt heavy and unsettling now carried a sense of unity and mutual understanding. Several people in the crowd stepped closer to Ruth, offering her warm smiles and words of encouragement. Ed crouched beside Ruth, his guitar still in hand. Do you need anything, ma'am? He asked gently. Water? Food? Ruth shook her head, her voice soft but steady. You've done more than enough, son. More than most would have. Ed smiled his heart warming at her strength. You're incredible, Ruth, he said. Your patience, your dignity, it inspires me. Ruth chuckled, her gaze distant as if she were revisiting old memories. Kindness, son, she said thoughtfully. Kindness is a choice, and so is courage. I've lived long enough to see both change the world, even in the smallest ways. Her words resonated deeply with Ed, who felt a renewed sense of purpose. 
As they spoke, other travelers gathered nearby, some sitting quietly, listening to their conversation. A young man approached hesitantly and asked, Can I take a picture with you both? Your story is something the world needs to see. Ed looked at Ruth, who gave him a small nod. Of course, she said. Moments later, they smiled together for a picture that would soon make its way to Ed's social media, captioned with heartfelt words that would spark a movement online. The applause and supportive murmurs gradually faded as people returned to their routines, but the moment left an undeniable impact on everyone present. Ed stayed beside Ruth until their flight was called, cherishing the connection they had formed in such a fleeting yet profound encounter. As Ed boarded the plane, he couldn't help but glance back at Ruth one last time. She was seated comfortably, her yellow scarf now resting neatly in her lap. The connection they had formed in such a brief moment left a deep impression on him. He thought about her words, kindness and courage being choices, and how they echoed in his heart. Once seated, Ed took a moment to share the story online. The photo with Ruth was accompanied by a caption. Today, I met Ruth, a woman whose strength and dignity moved me deeply. She reminded me that kindness and courage can change the world even in small ways. Let's all try to stand up for what's right when we see injustice. Love always wins. The post went viral within hours, inspiring countless comments and stories from people who had faced or stood up against similar injustices. At his concert that evening, Ed dedicated a song to Ruth and to everyone fighting their own quiet battles. This one's for Ruth, he said, strumming the chords with a quiet determination. And for all of you who believe that kindness still matters. As the audience joined in, their voices filled the venue with unity and hope. The moment felt like a ripple a reminder that even small acts of courage could inspire great change. What would you do if you saw someone like Ruth being treated unfairly? Would you stand up for them? Let us know your thoughts below.